So now that I've had an opportunity to spend a week in the Honda Ridgeline, I can definitely tell you that my perception of this vehicle before I had an opportunity to drive it is different than the reality. Plus, I wanna share with you an interesting fact about the Ridgeline at the end of the video. So with a 3.5 liter V6, 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, towing capacity and two-wheel drive at 3,500 pounds, all-wheel drive at 5,000 pounds, with 1,477 pounds worth of payload capacity, slightly higher if you go with the two-wheel drive model, and a bit lower if you go with the black edition, but roughly around 1,500 pounds of payload capacity, and a price tag starting at $29,000 and change, going all the way up to about $43,000 and change if you get the limited black model. You really, really have to convince yourself why you wouldn't want a Honda Ridgeline, especially if you're looking at that mid-size pickup truck market like a Toyota Tacoma, a GMC Canyon or Colorado from Chevy, and some of the other trucks that kind of compete in that same space like the Nissan Frontier. When you compare the Honda Ridgeline to trucks that compete pretty much in the same category, you'll really see that the trucks are almost the same size. The bed lengths are pretty much the same size. The cab configuration is pretty much the same size. Now, because the Honda Ridgeline does have a wider cab, both front and back seat passengers are definitely gonna have more leg room and more hip space than its competitors. But what I determined is probably the single biggest attribute that people who don't care for the Ridgeline look at is the overall look of the front end. That the front end has a distinctively modern crossover SUV appearance to it and not so much of a pickup truck look. And I think people have a hard time reckoning with that. They have a hard time looking at a pickup truck but with a very edgy SUV front end to them. If you look at trucks from Chevy, GMC, Ram, and Ford, and even trucks from Toyota and Nissan, you'll notice that the front is a very bold statement of truck. Here I am, I'm a big truck, you can throw a brush guard on me, and I'm gonna look aggressive. And I think the number one attribute that most people use to shy away from the Ridgeline, again, is the look of the front nose. The fact that it slopes the way it does. The fact that it looks a lot like a Honda Pilot. It has kind of that GMC Acadia front end to it. And it's more, again, of that crossover, mid-size, compact SUV front end. If Honda changed that, I think people would really be able to wrap their head around it. But then again, I think the Ridgeline was designed to fulfill a really, really specific customer that's looking for a lot of utility like you would get out of an SUV and a pickup truck, but in a combined package. Now, when it comes to the overall performance and capability section as a pickup truck, I think you have to have the right expectation going into something like a Honda Ridgeline, just as you would have to have the right expectation going into something like a GMC Canyon, Chevy Colorado, Toyota Tacoma, Nissan Frontier, or any mid-size pickup truck. You have to understand that they're not designed to be tow masters. They're not designed to hitch up to seven, 8,000 pound RVs and tow them around. They're not designed to hook up to car haulers or other incredibly large trailers. What they're designed to do is to fulfill a towing need that you might have, but not necessarily all the time. So for instance, you might have a 12 foot utility trailer that you need to haul around some lawn equipment, or you need to go to the store to pick up furniture or carry occasional supplies. You may need to go to Lowe's or Home Depot and pick up a bunch of gardening or landscaping blocks and bags of mulch, bags of stone, things like that. From a capabilities perspective, the Ridgeline really does offer up a lot. Like I said, roughly 1,500 pounds of payload capacity in an all-wheel drive configuration, as well as up to 5,000 pounds tow capacity for an all-wheel drive model. You'll pretty much be able to do anything in that that you would be able to do in any of the other mid-size pickup trucks. One of the really nice characteristics of this vehicle is the fact that you're gonna get a lot more technology, a lot more safety features, and a lot more capability in terms of using storage that might not normally be used by the other manufacturers, such as that chest area underneath the bed. That is a really, really cool and convenient way of utilizing typically dead space. Or a dual purpose tailgate that gives you the ability to drop it down like a traditional tailgate or swing it out like a door. That also can come in really handy. Plus some of the features that people would just really find a use for if you spend time outdoors with the family, like the outdoor speaker option in the back. That's really nice. 
plus all the safety and convenience features baked into it, you're really not going to be able to find on some of these midsize pickup trucks that are available. You'd have to go to a half ton pickup with many more luxury amenities. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you're going to pay roughly $35,000 to $40,000 for a base model crew cab four wheel drive half ton pickup truck. If you don't need the marginal increase in space as well as tow numbers, the Ridgeline is really a phenomenal vehicle to look at in terms of the package it delivers and what it delivers for the dollar you spend. And something to think about in terms of engineering is you want the right engineering for the right application. For a vehicle like this, having a unibody construction is actually a superior form of construction for that mid-size pickup truck than a frame with a body resting on top of it. You're not going to put the same type of weight. You're not going to put it in the same way that you would over a three-quarter ton and up pickup truck. A unibody design is a very, very good platform for how the Ridgeline uses it and arguably a safer platform in the event of a collision or in the event of a side impact accident or a rollover. Now, in no way am I claiming that the Ridgeline is the best pickup truck for everybody. As a matter of fact, most people who watch my channel probably haul fifth wheels, travel trailers, gooseneck trailers, and trailers that require a truck with a much higher payload and towing capacity rating. In many cases, a Ridgeline is not going to be the right truck for you if that's the need you have. But if you're shopping for a half ton truck for basic utility, if you're shopping for a mid-sized truck for general running around, picking things up, having that utility on hand, then I would highly recommend that you simply include the Ridgeline as a truck to look at, especially if you haven't seen the newer body style. See it in person, see if it's something you care for, see if it's something you feel you could live with, and then make the determination on what vehicle is going to be best for you based on the specs of what you need it for, as well as your budget and the features that you really want. In my opinion, that is really where the value is with the Ridgeline. Just the fact that you get so much for a relatively affordable price, a price that would be very, very hard to beat if you're shopping for a mid or full size pickup truck, especially if you want all the safety features and new technology features. So there are some really interesting things to point out on the window sticker for this vehicle, some of which you probably didn't know. First of all, when you look at the bed, some people automatically assume it's made out of plastic. In fact, it's made out of steel reinforced composite, so that's kind of cool. Another one, it's a 400 watt AC inverter, which is very similar to what you're getting on the domestic pickup trucks, but it's just really nice to know that the Honda Pilot is among the group of trucks that now offers that. Now, what I really want to point out here is this section right here. This vehicle is made from 75% U.S. and Canadian parts. But the bigger message here is if you look down here, final assembly point, Lincoln, Alabama, USA, country of origin for the engine, USA, transmission, USA, plus, of course, the safety ratings, 55555, five, 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 and then four star. This vehicle is probably more American in origin than a lot of vehicles, and probably far more so than you ever thought it was. So it's really interesting to see in this global economy how brands like Honda and Toyota and Nissan are really starting to move the majority of their production of vehicles sold in America to America. Um, you could say the same thing about the Tundra, which of course is assembled and built in San Antonio, Texas. But this specific Honda, it's really cool to see. Lincoln, Alabama, U.S., U.S., and 75% of it is made from U.S. and Canadian parts. That is outstanding. And let's talk about the price. For $42,595, you get this vehicle fully loaded with every conceivable feature. That is really nice considering the value you get here. So if you don't need a fully loaded model, $29,000 and change is what you're going to get an entry-level pilot for. And you're going to get it with a lot of features that you may not even get in a domestic vehicle. You get a lot for your money. And quite frankly, it gives you so much more capability that you may be looking for out of a pickup truck or an SUV or the combination of the two with the ride comfort handling performance of a car at a really affordable price. So it's definitely a vehicle that I would highly suggest you reconsider looking at, primarily because of everything you get for the cost. 
At the end of the day, I can honestly tell you the Honda Ridgeline is an excellent value vehicle. You get a ton for the price and you get a lot of features. Plus, it's predominantly made in America, assembled in America, and that to a lot of people is ultimately very important as well. Sometimes you have to look past the emblem and some of the preconceived biases that we have and open your mind up to some things that might be different than what you thought. And this vehicle is definitely one of those. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy my channel. I hope you enjoy my videos. If you do, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I'll talk to you again soon.